How many LGBTQ authors are there? Reading. The thing that most of us do because escaping to an alternate universe is sometimes more appealing than living in the real world. But today, we thought we would discuss LGBTQ authors to show you just how much representation our community has in books. This list might help you decide on some new reading material for yourself or for your school. This list also has authors geared towards younger readers too. But just as a warning here, some heavy topics are talked about in today's video. In a previous episode, we discussed John Morgan Wilson as the first openly gay mystery genre writer. In that video, we discussed how he won an Edgar Allan Poe Award, and that it was the first time given to an openly gay writer. Since that video, more information has been found about him, and we would like to share it with you now. He was born in Tampa Bay, Florida in 1945, and currently lives in West Hollywood, California. His first mystery novel, named Simple Justice, was the first of an eight-book series. It is referred to as the Benjamin Justice novels. The last of the series was written in 2008. This series not only gave him the Edgar Allan Poe Award, but it also made him a three-time winner of the Lambda Literary Award. He has also co-authored two mystery books with band leader Peter Dukin. John does not seem to have an author website or social media that could be found at the taping of this episode. Though, given he is currently in his 70s, he may not need one or is no longer writing, and not much can be found of his personal life either. Next is Christopher Rice. He is gay and is married to his husband, Broadway actor Clay Thompson. He currently resides in West Hollywood, California. Christopher comes from a long line of writers. For instance, his aunt, Alice Burkhart, was a fantasy and historical fiction writer. His parents were both horror novelist Anne Rice and poet Stan Rice. Yes, you heard that right. His mother is Anne Rice. He and Anne penned two novels together called Ramsey's the Dam, The Passion of Cleopatra, and secondly, Ramsey's the Damned, The Reign of Osiris. He writes in several genres, such as erotic romance, suspense and crime, supernatural thriller, and short fiction. He is a best-selling writer and was first published back in 2000. Some of his best works include A Dynasty of Souls, The Heavens Rise, The Vines, as well as The Burning Girl series. Most of his novels have LGBTQ characters in them. He also writes under the pen name of C. Travis Rice. The first book released under this pen name is Satfire Sunset. Two other novels, Satfire Storm and Satfire Spring, are coming soon, according to his website. Books under the pen name C. Travis Rice are tales of romance between men. Christopher Rice has had many accomplishments over his career. His novels, Heaven's Rise and The Vines, were both Bram Stoker Award finalists. His novels on the New York Times bestselling and Amazon charts are A Dynasty of Souls, Bone Music, Blood Echo, and Blood Victory in the Burning Girl series. He is also a recipient of the Lambda Literary Award. When he isn't writing, he is an executive producer of The Vampire Chronicles and The Lives of the Mayfair Witches. These are the AMC television adaptations of bestselling novels by his late mother, Anne Rice. Alongside his best friend, Eric Shaw Quinn, they run the production company, Dinner Partners. Next is Jennifer Finley Boylan, a transgender novelist, memoirist, and short story writer. Jennifer is married to her wife, Debbie. She is the author of 16 books, but her creative works are not stopping anytime soon, with a new novel on the way that she co-authored with Jody Picolt. It is slated for publication in autumn of 2022, by Ballantine Random House, as her author webpage states. She also is a contributing opinion writer with a column that appears on the op-ed page of the New York Times every first Wednesday of each month. Her 2003 memoir, called She's Not There, A Life in Two Genders, was the first best-selling work by a transgender American. The book is an, quote, exuberant memoir of a man named James who became a woman named Jenny. She's Not There is the story of a person changing genders, the story of a person bearing and finally revealing a complex secret. Above all, it is a love story. Jennifer has also written a trilogy series for readers ages 8 through 12 
called Falcon Quinn. All four books have previews on Goodreads if you're curious. Jennifer is not just a writer, though. She is also an advocate. For many years, she was the co-chair of the board of directors of GLAAD. As of 2017, she is a trustee of PEN America, the nonprofit advocating for freedom of expression worldwide. Next on our list is Lisa Bunker, who is also transgender. She lives in Exeter, New Hampshire with her wife, Dawn Hubner a child psychologist, parent coach, and author. Between the two of them, they have had three grown children. Before her career as a full-time author, though, she had a 30-year career in non-commercial broadcasting, most recently as program director of the community radio station in Portland, Maine. In 2018, she was elected to represent her town in the New Hampshire House of Representatives and was re-elected in 2020. In July of 2021, she founded Crusinova, it's an indie subscription service dedicated to championing innovation and crossword puzzle construction. If you're curious, there are some freebies called Lisa's Freebies on her website. Her novels are geared towards young readers, though that doesn't mean adults can't read them too. Both novels, Zenobia July and Felix YZ, feature lots of LGBT plus storylines. Zenobia July is about a girl who did not have a family that accepted her gender identity. Zen now has a new family and is the girl she has always been, despite being born with a male body. Her story, Petra and Pearl, is an anthology called This Is Our Rainbow, published in October 2021. This anthology is middle grade school level and is said to be the first of its kind. Petra and Pearl celebrates the power of online friendship and young rainbow human lives. Yoon Ha Lee is the next on our list. He is a Korean-American transgender male who was born in Houston, Texas on January 26, 1979. He lives in Baton Rouge, Louisiana with his husband and daughter. He received a bachelor's degree in math from Cornell University and a master's degree in math education from Stanford University. Yoon finds it a source of continual delight that math can be mined for story ideas. Around the age of 12, he realized he was trans. He began to write a fantasy book for his own enjoyment about a character who changed their sex. His English teacher at the time was curious about what they were writing all the time and asked to see it. After reading it, a conference was held. Now, at the time, he was too young to know that teachers only hold conferences to tell parents about behavior seen as bad or not normal. His mother suddenly became more interested in making them behave in more effeminate ways. He later said, quote, I especially remember the day she sat me down with makeup and told me that I was going to learn how to apply makeup, and I just sat there in mute refusal. She couldn't do anything further without my cooperation, so I won that round. Unfortunately, this type of behavior with parents still happens to this day and is not limited to just in the early 90s in Texas. In a 2016 interview for his novel Nine Fox Gambit, he told the interviewer how he was determined not to write about any trans people. At the time, he felt uncomfortable writing about the topic. He is very open about having bipolar disorder and open about his suicide attempts to hopefully show trans people everywhere that we need better resources for our community. For Yoon, it's easier to write about suicide than being trans. Though the main character in Nine Fox Gambit named Charisse has a mind of her own, she has to contend with a 400-year-old ghost, Jado, who is stuck directly inside her head. The author says, quote, There isn't a single trans character, but Cheris, body, and Jado, mind, ended up being a trans system, metaphorically anyway. Now, Cheris has a mind of her own, and Jado also used to have a body of his own, so the metaphor wasn't exact. But if it had been more exact, I wouldn't have been able to endure writing about it. Several of Yoon's novels have won awards. His first novel, Nine Fox Gambit, won the Locus Award for the best first novel. It was also a finalist for Nebula and Clark Awards. All three books in the Machineries of em Empire were Hugo finalists. His young adult novel, Dragon Pearl, won the Locus Award and was a New York Times bestseller. His short fiction has appeared in publications such as Clark's World Magazine. Next on our list is T.J. Klune. He is asexual and was awarded the Lambda Literary Award for his novel Into This River I Drown. He was born in Roseburg, Oregon. In 2013, Klune proposed to fellow gay romance writer Eric Arvin. 
at the Gay Rom Literary Conference in Atlanta, Georgia. The year prior to this, they met for the first time at the same conference when it was held in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Sadly, Eric passed away in December of 2016 from many years of health struggles. He is the author of many books. His most popular is the Green Creek series, The House on the Crucellian Sea, and the Extraordinaries trilogy. His most recent publication is Under the Whispering Door, published in September of 2021. TJ's website says he's, quote, believes it's important, now more than ever, to have accurate, positive, queer representation in stories. For those who are curious about reading a book with an ace character, then his novel, How to Be a Normal Person, is for you. The one main character, called Casey, shows how normal asexuality really is. The first book of the Extraordinaries trilogy was the first book he wrote for a young adult audience. The Green Creek series is about a generational pack of wolverines as they fall in love and fight back against those who would take everything from them. It is suggested to be a 16 years of age before reading that book though because it contains violence and sexual situations. His most recent publication, called Under the Whispering Door, is a fantasy novel about a ghost who refuses to cross over and the ferryman he falls in love with. Next up is Angela Chen, who is a science journalist, editor, and author of Ace, What Asexuality Reveals About Desire, Society, and the Meaning of Sex. Being Ace herself, she used a mixture of her own personal experiences, reporting, research, and stories from other ace people to write the book. She wrote the book primarily to bring awareness and understanding to the ace community. She says being ace is, quote, sometimes called an invisible identity, in part due to its lack of representation in the media. She first discovered the term asexual at the age of 14. At first, she didn't associate the term with herself. After she had a couple of relationships, she then came to the realization she was asexual after a period of time questioning her sexuality. Her book was named one of the best books of 2020 by NPR, Electric Literature, and Them. It was also selected for the 2021 Over the Rainbow book list by the American Library Association. Previously, she was the staff reporter at the Wall Street Journal, Vox Media's The Verge, and MIT's Technology Review. She is currently a senior editor at Wired Magazine. Next is Virginia Woolf. Born in 1895 as Adeline Virginia Woolf, she was raised in a household of strong Victorian values, where expressions of LGBTQ were still suppressed and considered dangerous. She enjoyed relationships with both men and women. Virginia married Leonard Woolf in 1912. They later founded their own printing press known as the Hogarth Press. Her writing had themes of feminism and LGBT plus ideas and themes throughout. These works were ahead of their time and showed she was going to write what she wanted even if it would be suppressed and banned. Her most influential relationship is with fellow writer Vita Sackville West. It is believed that Wolf's novel Orlando, a biography, was inspired by Vita. This novel explores issues around gender and sexuality. The pair exchanged 30 letters to each other for over 20 years. The book, Love Letters, has extracts from the women's diaries alongside their letters. Virginia was more attracted to Vita physically than her written work. She considered Vita a second-rate writer compared to her. In their relationship, they only went to bed twice. Virginia has been speculated to be manic-depressive, and on March 28, 1941, she committed suicide by filling her overcoat pockets with stones, then walking into the river Ouse, where she drowned. The next author on our list is River Solomon, who goes by the pronouns they, them, fay fair. River was born on November 17, 1989. They are from California and currently reside in Cambridge, England. They have a degree in comparative studies in race and ethnicity from Stanford University and have an MFA in fiction writing from the Manchester Center for Writers. When doing an interview with Penguin Random House for their newest book, Sorrowland, on May 5th, 2021, they were asked what their best piece of writing advice they've ever been given. They responded, write what terrifies you. Their most well-known books are Blood is Another Word for Hunger, The Deep, and An Unkindness for Ghost. That last book won a Firecracker Award selected as a Stonewall Honor Book and was named Book of the Year by several journals. 
The Deep won a Lambda Literary Award, but throughout their life, they were also nominated for several other awards. Anyway, if you want to learn more LGBT lessons, check out this playlist right here, and subscribe for weekly episodes. If you want to see bloopers and behind the scenes from every episode, consider becoming a member by hitting join down below. Anyway, I am your host, Professor Pride. Have a gay day, everyone, and bye for now.